two white men. Leo Sibio Africanus, a white man, a navigator, and Americo or Americus Vespucci, another white man. Right. So can two white men create you as a black man? That's impossible, right? Exactly. Now, when you look on that, on this, um, right here, on this flyer, the sign, what do you see next to American black or African American? What do you see next to it on the right side? On the left side is what they call us in slavery. On the right side is what God calls us. What do you see next to it? Judah, right? That is your true nationality according to the Bible. But let me show you why that's why that's such real quick. Just give me two minutes. Give me um, Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. This is Moses speaking to the Israelites in the wilderness, the so-called black, Hispanic, and native Indians, when we came out from under the bondage of Pharaoh, the real African, that had us in bondage. Just like today, the so-called white man has us in bondage. How? We might not have chains on our neck, but guess what? We got to follow his law, his rules. We got to do all his regulations. We can't leave this country without his permission. It's right. called a passport. Right. So we still in bondage as a people. Right. Why is that, though? Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, all these what? All these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now give me Amos 3 and 1. Now, what's your name? I'm sorry. Wayne. Ryan. Ryan? Wayne. Wayne. Okay, I'm Aaron. And I, I know you might have somewhere to go. I'm not trying to hold you up, but this is the most important thing you ever gonna hear, bro. And I just want to share a few scriptures with you. So we just read in Deuteronomy 28, 15, if the Israelites, you of the tribe of Judah, and the rest of the people on this side didn't keep God's commandments, curses was gonna come upon them. Well, what is a curse according to God? Read what you got. Bring it out! The book of Amos, chapter 3, in verse uh, of 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So God spoke a word against you, Wayne, against all of us that are the, of the children of Israel. Read on. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, uh -huh. saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. God said, Since I'm only dealing with you, you the nation that I always fought for, the only one I will ever fight for. When you turn your back on me, I'm going to punish you. That's what's going on right now. Hey. Us being in captivity in America right now, being the most jailed out of any other um, ethnicity, right. the so-called black man and Hispanic man. We fill up the jail cells. That is a punishment. Why? Because we broke God's commandments. We the leaders in HIV, all of the STDs. Why? Because we break God's commandments. Right. These are the things that happen to us. We're on the bottom economically. Why? Because we broke God's commandments. So right. now, read verse 46. And Bring I have a question for you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. Out. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So the curses are going to be upon the Israelites, Wayne, for a sign. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. What does a sign do? You wouldn't know where Wingstop was if you didn't see that sign right there, right? You have to see it. A sign helps you see something and identify it. So now let's see some of these curses that we've seen and it identifies who we are today. Get me verse 32. Go. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Now you tell me who this happened to, Wayne. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It said, your sons and your daughters are going to be given to another people. Right. Let's just go back a few hundred Jonathan. years. When Jonathan. did that happen? Jonathan. What happened there? When was our sons and daughters given to another people? We're going to show you because our people are very visual people. What do you see on that sign right there? It starts with an S. At the bottom, what do you see? Slavery. That's slavery. You see this here? All throughout here, them yokes of iron upon our people's necks, our foremothers and forefathers, that's slavery. That happened to us. That is a sign to identify who the Israelites are today. So I ask you a question. What movie have you, have you seen any slave movies? Like Birth of a Nation, Roots, um, give me some more. What they got? 12 Years a Slave. You seen those movies, right? When have you ever seen a Chinese man with a yoke of iron upon his neck, calling a white man master? You've never seen it before. 
What about the Eric man that owned that store right there? You ever seen him? With the Oka Iron Appliance that? Chinese man? So-called white man? Enslaved they own with Yosef Iron Appliance in that? It never happened except for to the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Indians. That's the sign, Wayne, that's going to identify who we are today. So it says our sons and our daughters were given to another people. If you've seen Birth of a Nation, you should remember a scene where a little white girl ran out the house and had a rope around a little black girl's neck. That was her property. That was given to her to her from her father. That's how our sons and daughters went into captivity. Read it again. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Uh -huh. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, uh -huh. and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So when you look at this picture, it says, Thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, meaning we wanted our children back. But could we get our children back there? Could you get your children back with a yoke around your neck and two yokes around your feet? You had no power, right? Let's see what God says about it. And fell with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. We had no might in our hand, Wayne. This is why we in the condition where we broke God's commandments, and that was a punishment, slavery, that came upon us. Right. Now let's get one, verse 48. This is irrefutable evidence. This has only happened. You said it out your own mouth. It didn't happen to the white man. It didn't happen to the Chinese man, the Arab man, no other nation of people. It only happened to our people. What does that make us? The Israelites, according to the Bible. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. So because we broke God's commandments, Wayne, and we're going to get to some of those, what's going to happen? Therefore, Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee. God said we're going to have to serve our enemies. You know you was walking, you was finna go to the store? Oh. Well, even if you was, or if, if you wasn't, wherever you go, guess what? Today or tomorrow or sometime, you're going to have to go to your enemies just like God said. And we're going to prove it. Read on. All right, bring it out. In hunger. In hunger. So if you want some food, where do you go to? What stores? You go to Walmart? You shop at Walmart? Win Dixie. Win Dixie. You see what I'm saying? All those stores, even the fast food restaurants. Rick Ross, yeah, he owns Wingstop, but can he, he owns a percentage of Wingstop, but can he feed all of the so-called black and Hispanics off of Wingstop by himself? He can't do that. It ain't enough Wingstops for that. So guess what? In order for us to eat, we gotta go to other stores. We can't just depend on one brother or two brothers or all the black owned businesses because it's not enough of them. It's not enough. God said you have to serve your enemies in hunger, meaning you have to go to them for food. Because we don't own Walmart or like you said, Winn-Dixie or Trader Joe's or Sears or Kmart or none of that stuff. We don't own it as a nation. We don't. Right. And in thirst. And in thirst. So now this is a big one because we drink water. We drink Gatorade. Gatorade is made right here, supposedly, in um, Gainesville, Florida, at the University of Florida. Who owns that? It's black people getting paid off of Gatorade. No, nah, we not. We not. Is we getting paid off of Aquafina? Is we getting paid off of Zephyr Hills? Is we getting paid from the people that pay their water bill? Are we the ones um, getting paid from that? Are we reaping the benefits? We not as a nation. Meaning, when you pay your water bill to GRU, is that going to your nation of people? That's my question. That money going to your nation? GRU is owned by the government, which is owned by who? The so-called white man here in America. He's the power. He has the power. So guess what? We paying him. We going to him in thirst. Read on. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. You got a Pittsburgh Steelers jacket on. Pittsburgh Steelers owned by who? A so-called white man. Every owner in the NFL is a so-called white man. So you got on the property, uh, the, the, the logo, you wearing the emblem, of your oppressor, just like God prophesied you was gonna happen. Right. So when you wanted clothing, guess what? You went and got that Pittsburgh Steelers jacket, and guess who's making the money off of it? That so-called white man. Another right. nation of people. Read on. And it want of all things. So whatever we want, a driver's license, a marriage certificate, a death certificate, anything, a house, a car, we gotta go to another nation of people for our need. Read on. Right. And he, so now, we might say, well, in America, all the nations outside of the so-called white man has to do that. 
But let's see how God put a difference between the children of Israel right there and all the other nations of people. Read on. And he uh -huh. shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So it says, and he, the same one you go to in food, hunger, thirst, and nakedness, and one of all things, is going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Right. I asked you earlier, who had yokes of iron upon their neck? And we both came to agreement that it was only us. So God is telling you that only the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Indians fit the punishment, fit the curse that came upon us. Right. You understand that? Now let me give you a law. Let me get Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. Because this is how we're going to get up out of this condition. We in servitude right now. We servants. Whether you like it or not, we servants. Meaning you either one or the other. You the one that run things or you the servant. Right now, we don't run anything. So we classified as a servant. Because we got to work their jobs. They not working for us. But we got to work their jobs. So read what you got. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 27. Yeah. And all of this is because we broke the laws of God. Now I'm going to give you a law that you got to keep. So read what you got. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads. Uh -huh. Neither shall thou more the corners of thy beard. Uh -huh. So it says ye shall not round the corners of your head, nor mar your beard. So that means anything that you grow, the hair that you grow on your face, you can trim it down, but you cannot shave it bald. When you work jobs, the so-called white man wants you to do what? Shave your face. Exactly, because he knows that's against the laws of God. As long as we keep these Negroes, these um, West Indians or Jamaicans, these so-called Haitians, so-called Dominicans, so-called Puerto Ricans, as long as we keep them doing that, they're going to stay in the Mississippi and we're going to stay on the top as a nation. That's how the so-called white man thinks. That's why we're in the condition we're in. So you cannot shave off the hair on your face or the, the hair on your face off. You cannot do that. Let's get another law. Let me get the book of... What you got for me? You have them? All right, let's get the book of... Leviticus 11. As a matter of fact, I got a question for you. What are, what are some of the things that you do? Like, week in and week out, what's some of the things that you partake in, that you practice? You play basketball? What else? Football? What else? You club at all? Sometimes. Sometimes? Let me show you according to the Bible. Clubbing is a sin according to God. Did you know that? You knew that? All right, let's get in the Bible. Let's get the book of Colossians. Get out! Chapter 3. Let's get uh, first, first Peter 4 and 3. Yes, sir. Let's get that first. First Peter 4 and 3. Then we're going to get that. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 3. We're going to show you that that's actually a sin. And guess what? I used to do the same things. Basketball, football, club. Right. Many other things. I used to do it. Pour out my sisters. But this is what the law of God does. Once you hear the word and you apply the word, that's what's going to change you. The application of it. So read what you got. First Peter 4 and 3. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 3. Uh -huh. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. So it says in time past, when we didn't know the laws of God, like you're learning right now, we walk after the Gentiles, meaning the other nations of people that did all those things, the clubbing, the rioting, all those things. We used to do that. Read on. When we walk in lasciviousness. Lasciviousness happens in the club. It's a strong sexual lust. When you go to the club, I don't know about you, but when I used to go to the club, I went for one reason. You know what that reason was? For sisters. Why else do brothers go to the club? You think we go to the club to look at each other? Nah, so what you going there for? Exactly, because if you wanted to drink, you can drink on your own. If you want to listen to music, you can listen to music on your own. So what we go to the club for? For the sisters, right? Lasciviousness, that's a strong evil lust that's within us. Read on. Lust! Excess of wine! Excess of wine, because when we go to the club, are we sober? Most of the time, what we doing? As a matter of fact, they got a name for it. They call it pre-gaming. You either get high as hell out of your mind before you get in the club, or you get drunk, or you do both. Does our people not do that? Exactly, read on. R reveling, reveling, revelings. Revelings, going into that partying, that's what it is, partying. That loud music, um, the scenery, they make it dark purposely, make everybody look good. You might look at a sister, a lot of times we ain't looking at their face, we looking at what their assets are. 
You see what I'm saying? They do that purposely to keep us in this condition. We don't. Hey. Thank you, teens. Banquetons, same thing. And abominable idolatries. And abominable idolatries. That's a heavy one because all these things that you just read up here, the lasciviousness, the excess of wine, the reverence, all of that is idolatry. Anything outside of keeping God's commandments is idolatry. That's right. right. So we are literally in the midst of idolatry when we're in there. Now let me get Matthew 5 and 27 real quick. Look it up. To deal with the, the side of when we go there for the women. What do we do? How are we breaking God's laws when we're in the club? Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 27. Uh -huh. Look it up. Ye heard that it was said by them of old time. So it was said of them by old time, meaning our forefathers in the Bible. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So we shouldn't commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's one of the Ten Commandments, right? Read on. But I say unto you, uh -huh. that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So you hear that? Whosoever look on a woman, because in the club, when we go to the club, what are we doing? We looking for who? Women. We ain't looking them in their face to see how beautiful they may be. We looking at the whole package and how they dressed. How they dressed. They ain't got no clothes, right? Exactly. They have on no clothes. So you going to innately already look at these sisters. But now you in the spirit of adultery when you do that. You understand that? Right. You breaking God's laws when you do that. That's right. something that the club offers to us. Right. Let's get um Titus chapter 2 verse 6. Bring it up. We're going to touch on some more of that stuff that's in the club. When we go there, then we're going to get Colossians 3. Titus chapter 2 and verse 6. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 6. No! Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. So this is actually a commandment of God. Give me 1 Corinthians 14, 37. This is actually a commandment of God. Even though it says thou shalt not, it doesn't say thou shalt not in front of it. God has given us a commandment. He says, young men, likewise, exhort, meaning this is what your behavior is supposed to be, sober-minded. But what do our brothers and sisters do when they go to the club? They pop pills. They get high off of all the drugs. So it might not just be weed. That's just a gateway drug for most people. Weed, um, the crack, the, the heroin, the pills, the molly. The alcohol, we are not sober-minded. But you as a young man, Wayne, God commanded you to be sober-minded. And let's make, let's see if this is a commandment or not. Read what you got. Look it up. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, and verse 37. Uh -huh. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, uh -huh. let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So Paul is saying everything he wrote unto us was a commandment of the Lord. So when we read young men exhort to be sober minded, that is a commandment of the Lord. You understand that way? Right. So now let's get Colossians 3 and 5. Look it up. We're going to show you what you must do to get out of this state after we read this scripture. How you truly repent. How you get the kingdom of heaven. Because that's my next question for you. So I want you to think about that. How do you get the kingdom of heaven? Read what you got. The book of Colossians, chapter 3 and verse 5. Uh -huh. no! Mortify death for your members. So God says mortify, meaning destroy, get rid of your members. We're going to see what the members are. Which are upon the earth. Uh -huh. Fornication. Fornication. That happens at the club, right? Uncleanness. Right. Uncleanliness happens at the club, right? Right. Unordinate affection. Inordinate affection happens at the club. Right. And they actually created clubs for inordinate affection. They call homosexual clubs. Read on. Right. Evil concupiscences. Uh-huh. And covetousness, which is idolatry. So it says evil concupiscences is a strong evil lust, a strong evil thought against the most high laws. That's evil. And it says covetousness. It's a whole lot of covetousness going on in the club. Because there's a lot of brothers and sisters that's married in the club and got boyfriends and girlfriends in the club. And what do other brothers do? They say, I don't give a damn, your man ain't here. We actually made a song about it in the 90s. What your man got to do with me? That's what he said. And she's saying, I got a man. That's how evil we are. The rappers rap about it today. We are evil as hell because we've been taught this by our oppressors. And that's what we follow. We don't follow what God told us to do. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. 
Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.